Hey, Arrow, what's going on? It's opening day. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> and you're talking with somebody with, with the last name of your favorite baseball team. And she's a fan of that team. <laughs> True. You got 20 minutes. Go for it. Good morning, Rebecca. <laughs> How are you doing? Good morning. I'm well. How are you? Fantastic. I have been a fan of, of this show, Better Things, since day one. The very second yeah. it appeared on streaming, I have been there every season. I am so happy to hear that. It's well. It's amazing that th this is a family that is growing up, growing apart, growing somehow back together again. And the thing is, is that now, now they're getting to the age where they may grow away from mom. Mm-hmm. That's what happens. And you know, like for us who work on the show, we've been we've been watching that happen in real life. We started with these kids when they were kids, and now they're like stunning young women going out into the world and you know i want to protect them and give them all kinds of advice that they don't need from me like it's it's art imitating life for sure it, it amazing about this show is the fact that they make it so real in the way that sam comes home from a busy day and they, and they show her bringing in the trash can i'm going oh my god she's one of us <laughs> It's just like my trash can. <laughs> the, the writers had to have lived this. Is 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 that what it is? Because, I mean, it, it's such a picture of our everyday world. Oh, absolutely. So Pamela Adlon, who plays the lead character, Sam Fox, who has directed every episode, who's the executive producer, is also the head writer and has, you know, written or, or guided the writing of a lot of those episodes. So, yes, she, it, she has literally lived all of that. And the show is semi-autobiographical. So she plays, um, the, the character of Sam Fox is a single mom, a working actor, mother of three daughters, and uh, her British mother lives next door. All of that <laughs> is also true of Pamela Adlon. So it is, yes, very much from her life. Well, you know her mother adds a, a texture to that, to that storyline because I love it when she comes on and I love her struggles in, in life as well. Mm hmm. Oh, my gosh. And Celia Emery, who plays that character, is just like one of my favorite people on Earth. She's she's like British actress. She's been in a million things, incredible stories. And uh, like whenever we're on set together, I just kind of follow her around like a puppy. Is it is it written out or is it where you just say, OK, here's what the scene is going to be. Play it like your heart is going to give it to you. It's written out. And we do, you know, we we say what's on the page because that's our job. But there's mm -hmm. also the great thing is because Pam is the boss and she's on set that we that we also have more freedom on this show than on other shows to sort of go like, I feel like I would say something different here. Or could I do this crazy thing here? And because she's in charge, she can say yes. And it doesn't have to go through like seven layers of studio executives before we can like change one word. So sometimes there have been times when we've sort of been in the middle of a scene and going like, you know what, this isn't working. Can right. we figure out how to fix this? And we'll just fix it on the fly, which is, um, you know, that feels a lot more like making art than television feels sometimes. Is it a real house? And the reason why I bring that up is because I always take note of how many times they touch the statue at the top of the stairs. Mm. Um, well, it's really interesting. So the first two seasons, it was a real house. We shot on location at a house in Altadena. And for the last three seasons, they recreated the house in a soundstage. Wow. And I, when I tell you, I mean, like, it's two levels, stuff in the kitchen works. They recreated it so down to the last detail that for the first year that we were shooting in there, I would forget that I wasn't in the real house and I would walk outside and be like, oh, <laughs> right, I'm on a stage. Like it was really messing with my brain. <laughs> yeah, because that house is part of the acting. I mean, it, it, it's such a yeah. huge personality on the show because in each room that they go into, even the dining room where she's trying to have dinner with her family, like a normal mm -hmm. family, but, but, but you know, they, there's still the struggles and the little arguments between the girls. Yeah, it's, it's, it was an amazing, the house is incredible. We, in season two, there was a day that I got a call sheet that said bear warning across the top. And I was like, oh, they must be doing something later that I'm not involved in. But they weren't. There was a bear, like, in that neighborhood <laughs> who was, like, swimming in the pool at the house where we were shooting and was, like, hanging out, hoping to get a crack at our craft services. And so I think they were like, maybe it's not such a good idea for us to shoot in an actual house. Let's go to a stage <laughs> where we can control for bears. Don't don't you think that your character and your role in the show, everybody wants one of you in their life? I mean, the leadership, the forgiveness, I mean, the, the, the way that you pull things together when everything seems to be pulling apart. I certainly think that Tressa feels like everyone should want a Tressa in their life. <laughs> um, you know, 
Yeah, I mean, you know, she's a Tressa is a caretaker, and she 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 can't help mothering everyone around her. And some people love that, and some people don't love it. And sometimes it gets in the way. That's what's amazing about the show is we all know people like that, you know. Did you have to do some homework, or is this something that you're you're relying on? Well, I've already been through this. I know exactly what this role is all about. It it came pretty naturally. And one of the things about the show is that I think, um, again, because Pam is sort of the hub of everything. Um, the characters have grown as as the actors have influenced them and vice versa. And so it's never been like something that I think any of us had to reach really far for. They've always felt, those characters have always felt pretty close to us. Is it emotional to be on on the, the, the set? And the reason why I bring that up is because the, the I believe it was season two where, where we went through the emotional changes of where we were, we were introduced that she was she was not a girl. She she mm -hmm. she really was you know openly going to be gay. And, and, and the mm -hmm. thing is, is that that was emotional. That is still inside my heart. The way that Sam handled that situation and how they embraced it growing forward. It wasn't just an episode. It was now going to be a part of all of our lives. Mm hmm. I mean, it can. That's one of the great things about working on this show is it's half hour. It's a comedy, but it's incredibly emotional. Sometimes some episodes are more so some are less so. But like, yeah, that episode, we've done a few. There was one in season two called Eulogy, where, you know, Sam is feeling underappreciated by her daughters mm -hmm. and we have a fake funeral for her. And we all sort of tell oh her how God. we feel about her. I, I mean, I was crying like snot down my neck crying and i was like oh god this is gonna be on television so yes we have we have had some very emotional episodes on that show yeah because all of you got everybody on that set it brings in the reality of the moment and and really we feel like we're stepping into your world i mean when, when you talked about the eulogy and everything like that oh my god I, it made me think okay if we if i had to write a eulogy about somebody who's alive what would i say Mm hmm. Yeah. And it's it's always interesting to me which episodes connect with which people. And there's really you really can't tell. Like I, I said to someone earlier, you know, it's a show that's mostly about women. And in the beginning, I men would come up to me all the time and say, I know this show isn't for me, but I love it so much. And I've started saying when men say that to me, I've started saying, well, I think it's a show about people. So you're fine. Like, I mm -hmm. think it's just I think it's just about human beings and i so every episode like different episodes connect with different people and it's always i just love hearing from people which ones are their favorite or which moments or characters resonated most with them because it tells me something about the person i'm talking to one of the one of the subjects that my wife and i always bring up is is when she goes to a voice over uh where she's going to go cut a commercial or she's going to do something mm -hmm. with voice work and stuff like that and my wife always asks is that the way it really is and i go that's exactly the mindsets and the mood swings and stuff yeah. that you go through and the people that you have to deal with and and so she's very real with that yeah, it's not, it's not, uh, you know, it's not a show that sort of polishes everything and makes it look perfect and prettier than it really is. It's very, Pam loves the sort of uncomfortable, awkward silences and the moments that I think a lot of uh, TV shows and movies filter out. So we're, we're the opposite. We, and anytime there's any kind of like awkward, weird life moment, we're going to put it on the show. And isn't that because of the, the, the comedian side of her personality? I mean, she was very close and still is probably close with Louis K. I mean, it's, it's just amazing how, how this, this show just evolves around relationship. It, it, yeah, I mean, it's a, I think it's because she, you know, Pam, Pam was a child actor. She's been doing yeah. this for a yeah. very long time. And so I think she's had enough of the perfect looking, like all the perfect makeup and all the perfect clothes. Like a lot of her clothes are her clothes the art in the house is her art like it, it's it the show is like a craft project it's not um in some ways i think it's meant to be something completely different than most of the shows that we've all worked on all this time because because we've all been doing this forever and we wanted to do something a little bit different and that means showing the ugly side of things and the awkward side of things and what what's great about it you know we, we talked about it being a comedy and stuff like that and we all know that a lot of comedy comes from the darkness but the the, the strange thing that you guys have got to be battling with is the fact that this is this is not Bart Simpson that you have to be able to grow with these characters what is that like yeah. for you personally that you're seeing I mean I know how fast life is moving on this side of the screen what about on your <laughs> side it's, I mean, that's the the gift of television is that you get to grow with the character over time. Like you you start with them and, you know, I didn't know everything about Tressa. I didn't know that Tressa was gay until season two. 
you know, you get to like learn things about your character as you go and 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 the writers sort of take what the actors are doing and infuse the character with that and vice versa. And so like it, get it's getting to know these characters over these years and getting to know these actors in this crew over these years, that is the joy of doing television. And so it's just Ugh, I'm sad that it's ending. <laughs> no, don't say that. No, I, I don't believe in endings. I never say goodbye. I always believe okay. that we're just going to have some time away from each other. We're going to go out and learn some new things, and then the show is going to come back. Because there's no way that, that she's going to let this thing just disappear. Fair. I like that. I like that. And also, um, you know, selfishly, the people in the cast, like all of us who have become friends, are never getting rid of each other. We text each other all the time. So Aww. that's not ending. See, that explains a lot because, I mean, because everybody does work together so well. And, it, and it's not just, you know, you, eye acting or anything like that. When you guys are looking at each other doing those roles, I mean, it really looks authentic. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, when you think about it, like if you got to run your own show, wouldn't you want to surround yourself with people you actually like and want to spend yep. 14 hours a day with? Like, <laughs> so Pam, she has really handpicked every single person on that set, the cast, the crew, every single person is there because she wants them to be there. And so, yeah, we all get along really well and genuinely love each other, which is an awfully nice way to spend your day. So are you like the rest of us on this side of the, of the streaming in the way that when, when we wrap up a, a season, I mean, I I moan. I and then I start mourning my my relationship with the characters. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, that's yeah. I watch every episode, whether I'm in it or not. I've watched them multiple times. My husband, you know, there are episodes that I know he always cries at, and like I'm gonna go back and <laughs> I think I think when it's over, I'm gonna go back and watch the whole thing from the beginning just to like marvel at how much younger I was and like see everybody in the very beginning and remember what it was like to shoot all those early episodes. Yeah, I go through exactly the same thing. Yeah, because I mean, the, 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 it, to me, it's it's got that all in a all in the family kind of attitude about it. That they they they're, you guys are never afraid to cover any subject, and and you you mm -hmm. you're brave at doing that. Is that the girl power in in the entire set? I think it's the Pam power, and it's Pam. all of us just wanting to tell the truth. Yeah. You know, like there's so much about the show that is not normal. The the number of women on the crew, the just the way it's structured that like you know that we have she has the creative freedom fx trusts her to to make decisions there's so much about it that's different that i think that just carries through to the way we handle things she's pam's pam's not gonna you know she's not gonna lie she's not gonna sugarcoat things that's not the kind of person she is and so that comes through on the show do you ever get mixed up with sam and pam I mean, because I mean, oh my God, I mean, I mean, I, I would love to have a conversation with both of them as in character and <laughs> out of character, just like we, we, we we're doing right now with Tressa is, is the fact yeah. that, I mean, I get to talk to you right now, Rebecca, but at the same time, I'm hearing Tressa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm surprised actually that I haven't gotten more confused about it because uh, Sam and Pam are uh, very similar. They're just different enough. And of course, you know, on set, Pam is director and boss lady Pam. So mm -hmm. there's. There is a difference, enough of a difference there. I'm, but you're right. I'm actually surprised I haven't gotten it more confused. So, what have you learned from the show? I mean, personally, as as a person stepping away from Tressa, what what have you picked up? Oh my gosh, I can't even. Be, just watching, I've just sort of decided that Pam was my mentor. Oh. Like I didn't really even tell her that. But being on a set where. There's one person, one woman who is the star of the show, the director of the show, the head writer, the executive producer, you know, the everything. Like I've just been following around her around watching her work. And usually one person doing all of those jobs on a TV show would slow everything down to to like unbearable levels. And that's not how it works on this show. It's incredible that it's more efficient because everything goes through her. Like that is a real accomplishment. And so I learned so much from just watching her put this thing together. Um, I, I, it's it's like I got a whole degree, a degree in Pamela Adlon making television. So let me ask you this question, a creative person to a creative person. Is the show Better Things fruit on the vine or is it the seed that is going to be the, the, the server of greater things that are about to come for all people involved? Oh my gosh. See, that's a question for a writer. I don't think about that. I just think, why am I crossing to the refrigerator? <laughs> I hope, I mean, I, it is better things is for sure. The fruit of many people's decades in this business yeah. envisioning what they think television could be. And it's also, I hope the seed of many people being inspired by 
this show and going on to create something else that we've never seen or imagined before that no one else could make but them. The power of binge watching. I mean, I, I, I agree with, with, with your husband in the way that, yeah, I'm going to start all over. I mean, because, I mean, it, that's, it's one of those things you can't get tired of. And how? How did you break that wall down as a team that we can't get tired of these episodes? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I think it's just like, you know, it's like when you're, when you're cooking and you're putting together a great recipe. Mm -hmm. Like, the, as long as you, every single thing that you put into it is of high quality, you're increasing your odds that the end result is going to be delicious. I, you know, that's, that's a, a good way to make television, like fill it with people who are really good at their jobs, who are genuinely happy to be there and who want to be there. And you're, you're not guaranteed a success, but you're heading in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. One of, one of my favorite seasons was the season when Sam was, was filming the movie. Um, were you guys on an mm -hmm. actual movie set or, or a scene? Because I mean, it, it looks so you know, like, like, like my God, I mean, she, 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 with the makeup and the dirt on her face and, and, you know, dry, <laughs> you're trying to drive the car and everything and, and everything went wrong. And it was like, of course yep. it did. Yeah. I wish I had been there those days. I don't know what it was like because I wasn't, I wasn't in those scenes. Um, but, you know, she certainly has a lifetime's worth of experience to draw from. So she knows she she could put that kind of thing together in her sleep. There's got to be a book about this show sometime in the future, because, I mean, it, it, it we want to know more about the people as well as the characters. And, you know, because they, they did it with friends. Why can't we do it with better things? We keep telling her that she needs to write a cookbook because, yeah. <laughs> because anybody who watches the show knows there's a so lot of true. cooking on the show. Oh Two episodes ago, she made borscht and like she's that kitchen works and she is really cooking in that kitchen. And Pam is a person who really cooks. So, yes, we keep telling her that she needs to do a cookbook. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You, it's so right. And, and see, and when she goes into the kitchen, it always reminds me of, of the Brady Bunch, even, even though that Carol Brady didn't cook. But we still it's they had that those conversations in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And it looks like a used kitchen, like there's half <laughs> onions sitting around, like it's not a pristine, perfect kitchen. There's stuff, dirty dishes, and like stuff has been used. Well, away from better things, you have been a very, very, very busy person. How do you find the time to find you? Oh, that's a good question. Therapy? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh you know, the, being an actor is an interesting exercise in work-life balance. Sometimes it's it's not like a nine to five, you know, you go to work the same hours every day. It's Every day is different. You never know what's coming. You could be unemployed for weeks and suddenly yeah. you get an email that you're flying across the country for six months. So it takes a little getting used to to live in that kind of uncertainty. And I it's not for everyone. But um, I think you learn, I have learned to appreciate the downtime when you have it and recharge your batteries and constantly be aware that it could all change at any moment, which I think is true for everybody, honestly. It's just maybe uh, we're, people in certain jobs are a little more aware of it because that's our every day. You know what I mean? So true. So true. There are many times I, I, I will tell people, I wish I could go back into lockdown. I just want to go do nothing. Yeah. I just want to think. I just, I just, I just want to just do nothing. I think it's changed all of us. And, you know, I think a lot of people are still uh, trying to figure out how it's changed them or haven't come to terms with the fact that it's changed them. But, you know, yeah, I think we're all dealing with versions of that. It's, yep. it's, I'm happy to be going back to work and getting back to social activities. And I definitely need more rest in between. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rebecca, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Thank you. It was such such a pleasure talking with you. I would love to come back. Absolutely. Will you be brilliant today, okay? Okay. Thank you. You too.